you can order your copy of my 2021 NFL Draft Guide today. What you'll get is over 550 individual prospect scouting reports like you see here, a ton of information that'll help you keep track of who your favorite team drafts or even signs as a free agent. It's all here, over 650 full color pages in PDF form. You can order your copy at the following link, footballgameplan.com slash 2021 draft guide. Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook here with football game plan scouting. And you know what that means. The NFL draft and CFL draft for 2021 is rapidly approaching and it's time to get into our prospect rankings for this year's draft class. And before we get started, let's take a look at what the grades that you'll see by the prospects actually mean. Let's break down the defensive tackle position and checking in at number one is Davion Nixon out of Iowa. The 6'3", 306 pounder has tremendous quickness and play speed and I believe he's agile in all directions and does a great job of finding the football. He's got A plus awareness for a guy that's playing as fast as he does. Really solid on both ends of defense. I believe he's gonna be a day one stud once he hits the NFL. Levy Anwuza Ricky out of Washington opted out of the 2020 season, but studying his 2019 film, you saw a player who has the long arms that you want, but uses them like wheat baskets when he swats away an offensive lineman's hands. He does a fantastic job of working with the length on the interior. He's coming off of a strong week of work at the Reese's Senior Bowl as well. Looking at the rest of the top 10 and Milton Williams of Louisiana Tech has excellent versatility. His background as a defensive end gives him a unique advantage on the inside. He's extremely quick off the ball and almost immediately he becomes a pressure player. I can even see him playing multiple techniques up front in the NFL. Christian Barmore of Alabama and Darius Stills of West Virginia are two of the more accomplished defensive tackles in this class with Barrymore being named defensive MVP in the national championship game. He's got the first step quickness that you want off the ball at that position. And Kenny Randall out of Charleston is one of many pro prospects coming from that program the last three seasons. He's really good at the point of attack. The strength is there that you want it to be to slow an offensive lineman from getting movement. I think his explosiveness is underrated and could be a double team drawing type player at the next level. Jack Heflin of Iowa was a three year starter at Northern Illinois before transferring to Iowa this season. He's excellent in run support, using his functional strength to hold his own at the point of attack. And he's got the good fundamentals to attack double teams and the hand usage to slip those blocks to get into the backfield and make a play. He's just one of the few talented, productive defensive tackles in this 2021 class. Osa Odigazua from UCLA could provide a team with some versatility, having the capability to play multiple techniques on the inside. Mustafa Johnson of Colorado and Marlon Tuipolotu out of USC are two stellar players coming from the Pac-12. Tommy Togiai from Ohio State had a fantastic season for the Buckeyes, and he's one of those players who does a great job of just staying in the fight at the line of scrimmage, which ultimately gets him involved in the play. Michael Dwumfour out of Rutgers played at Michigan before transferring to the Scarlet Knights this season. He's explosive as hell off the ball, like he's shot right out of a cannon. He's already got the natural leverage and is able to get even lower with his stance, which allows him to dive right into an offensive lineman's chest to create disruption. Looking at the rest of prospects 21 through 30 and Luke Beckett out of Boston College is a very active player who has fluid athleticism. He has solid ball get off and does a great job of keeping his feet busy throughout the play. And in my opinion, Malik Herring of Georgia is best inside as a three tech where his quickness can be a big time asset. Although he can play the five, I think as a three is where he can have the most success. I like O'Brien Goodson out of Memphis who played mainly nose tackle for the Tigers but has three technique type skill set. I think he gives really good effort in pursuing the ball. Josiah Bronson of Washington played outside as an end in the Huskies defense and gives you some flexibility up front. He's got a really good first step and shows the ability to accelerate and close on the ball carrier. Now rounding out the defensive tackle rankings with prospects 31 through 36, two Indiana Hoosiers in Jerome Johnson and Javon Swan just shows you how talented that Indiana defense was this past season and why it was tough at times to move the ball against him throughout the season on a consistent basis. Moving on to nose tackles and leading off is Alim McNeil out of NC State who graded out as our number one prospect at the position. He does an outstanding job of taking on and handling double teams. Whoever the two linemen are that he's engaged with will not make it to the backers, that's for sure. 
Tyler Shelvin out of LSU checks in at number two. He's got great natural leverage and plays with fantastic pad level. He will not let your center have a good day. In fact, neither will your guards. That's how difficult he is to handle at the point of attack. He's country strong and can anchor and create a pile on the inside. Seeing how the rest of the top 10 shakes out, and you can see how much I'm excited about this nose tackle class. This is arguably one of the stronger groups in a few years. Both Quentin Bohanna out of Kentucky and Tadaro Slayton from Florida are two SEC nose tackles that bring a little bit of spice with them once they get off the ball. They are both 357 pounds and 340 pounds respectively, but they don't move like that at all, having excellent quickness and footwork. But going back to number six, Deion Noville from North Texas, another player who's 330 pounds, but doesn't play like that. He's that like he's that heavy. When you look at him, he understands how to use his length to gain an advantage and is quickly able to get full extension on an offensive lineman. I believe he has the potential to thrive as a one technique at the professional level. Adam McLean of Maryland and Forrest Merrill of Arkansas State helped close out an impressive nose tackle group for the 2021 draft class. So that's it for this edition of Football Game Plan Scouting. I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to the Football Game Plan Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Also subscribe on iTunes to Football Game Plan Podcast and leave us a five-star rating. That's where you can find our Scout Team Podcast. And keep it locked every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the Game Plus Network for our Scout Team show, where we will have a lot more of NFL and CFL draft-related content coming down the pike.